Hello and welcome to another episode of Monkey Business, the podcast which really looks into the chimp mind, into the mindset of very interesting, often maverick, successful people. I'm Rosalind Palmer and I use my transformational therapeutic understanding and my transformational coaching understanding to really dig deep because what I'm fascinated about is the mindset behind the actions. There are many habits of success, the seven habits of success, but I'm interested in the mindset that creates those conditions. And the guests I interview really have fantastic information that they can share with you to help you reset and realign your life so that they feel as good on the inside as they look on the outside. And nobody better than my guest today, Billy Shepherd. So hello, Billy, I'm going to introduce you in a moment, but welcome. Thank you, thank you, it's so good to be with you. Yes, I'm really delighted uh, to have you here today. I always check how people would like to be introduced, so excuse me while I look away from you for one moment. Um, so Billy Shepherd is the founder of Billy Shepherd and Associates. You draw on many years of professional acting uh, experience and guest produce workshops and collaborations with people, including such luminaries as Academy Award winner Alan Arkin, who I am a massive fan of, and that you have drawn on your acting career, your uh, guest workshop career, to create corporate training that draws on all of those elements. So as an actor, producer, acting coach, you have now transferred those skills into the world of business communications. Would that be an accurate introduction for you, Billy? Yes, and beautifully stated. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So I'm really fascinated about how you're bridging the corporate and artistic worlds. You, you've actually told me you're in Silicon Valley and obviously your corporate clients, I'm sure you draw from a, a very wide um, spectrum. But how do you bridge that artistic background, that artistic training and that artistic world into the corporate world? And what can corporates learn from theatrical techniques? Well, most corporates don't have their dog barking in the background. <laughs> you know what? Oh, it's absolutely oh, fine. Boy. We're very relaxed on this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Um, he'll bark for a bit or I could... <laughs> continues do not out. worry we're fine I like I, we, look we're all about real life so do not worry <laughs> well you know and and that bridges us to, to my response corporate people and acting people have one thing in common we're we're humans <laughs> and, and as much as you've heard it before things have changed in the world technologically and scientifically human beings are still human beings and the core to good communication is reaching each other from my core to you, your core. And that's what actors spend our careers doing uh, is, is practicing how to get to our inner truthful being in the present moment. It may be in an imaginary situation, but being truthful in a present moment uh, and teaching that through various techniques to corporate people who need to be mindful and get to learn how to get in touch with their inner genuine feelings and beliefs and thoughts. And added with the techniques of body, voice, intention, and the ability to improvise makes one a better communicator, a better presenter, because we're making love with the audience or the listener. We're connecting, we're giving, and we're taking. So when I realized that, uh, I, I started exploring how to take it into the corporate village, into the business village and other careers. 
to talk back to that, but that's really raised something in my mind that I've spoken about quite a lot in recent years. So my former career was PR and I was around celebrities and around, you know, high level events, but I was always the person in the wings. I wasn't, I was the one pushing them into the spotlight going, it'll be absolutely fine. We've prepared you for this. And some years ago, when this new iteration of my career that I do today, transformational therapy and coaching, took off, and because I probably am a natural communicator myself with a background in PR and communications, I suddenly found myself in the spotlight. I was the one being interviewed, and I actually found it incredibly uncomfortable. And I found it a lot more difficult than I would have thought. I, I sort of had this idea that because of my background in PR and being around lots of interviews, TV, media, movies even, that I would just, you know, slip into it easily. But I did find it very difficult. So how do you help CEOs, corporate people bridge that fear when they're the ones suddenly having to be in the spotlight? It's a process, but it's a teachable process. It's, it's very much like having a coach that's coaching you how to be a better tennis player or mm. a, a better dancer or a better actor. The process begins like an actor begins with the body. There, there are four components I discovered after getting my graduate degree because they forced me to, to be more definitive in discovering this process that I had developed over the years. There are four components to getting prepared to present. And if one skips those four component processes, they're very brief, they just take a bit, they will be self-conscious on stage. S what is self-conscious? Self-conscious is our amygdala, that part of our brain, yep. telling us that we're meeting a tribe of, of savages that want to cook us and eat us for dinner. That, that's the message that it sends to our body. Absolutely. Or that there's a loose tiger in the audience. That's how it feels to, to speak to a group of strangers. And the what are process, the four processes then? Yes, the four, the, the, the under the overarching umbrella is present moment awareness. One has to get oneself present. You've got hence presence. That's what presence is, present. And that present moment awareness has these four components. The first is the body. Am I thirsty? Is, are my shoulders stiff? Are my knees shaking? Are my hands shaking? Is my stomach tight? Do, am I breathing in and out uh, the, the body awareness? There's a simple breathing exercise we do for that. The second is the voice. Am mm -hmm. I loud enough? Do I have modulation? D am I using pauses? Is my diction clear and crisp? Do I have a dialect that needs adjustment? The voice. The third is the ability to improvise. And that can be taught and it needs to be practiced a bit. And once you get the hang of it, one feels being in a truthful, genuine moment. And then once someone feels being genuine in front of communicating with others, they get addicted and they know when they're not and they know how to get themselves present. And the fourth, I call it the secret of life. My intention, why am I talking to this group? Who are these people? What do they need from me? Why, why am I talking? What is my goal? And that's the intention. Now, these four things, all actors need to adjust or we won't go on stage because all we'll be thinking of then is I gained four pounds. I didn't have a good hair day. Uh, Sally was mean to me in the wings. It's all about self presenting is not about self, interestingly enough. Presenting needs to be transposed to, it's all about you. Mm -hmm. I'm giving to you. Why? Because I want something from you. 
I want you to join our group. I want you to work on this project. I want you to explore our new invention. I want you to help us lift this log. It's all about you. And that's what actors know. They give, they give, they give to the other actor. And then the other actor gives back to them. And then you got some lovemaking going. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're really talking a lot about intention and how you're turning up, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> I shared a blog a while ago about the greatest experience I've, I ever had in an audience with a corporate presenter. And it was back in the 90s, in the days of overhead projectors, if you remember that. And they had those horrible acetates that you would put on the overhead projector and it would project up behind you. And they were very slippy. You know, those hard acetates that you put one after the other onto the overhead projector. And this speaker who was at an advertising conference, he came on stage and as he came on stage, he tripped up and the acetates went everywhere and they were just like, you know, sliding from one side of the stage to another. People ran in, they gathered them up, they gave them to him. But of course, they were in a completely, utterly random order, not the order that his presentation had been structured in. The whole audience held their collective breath going, oh, my goodness, what is he going to do? And he said, I'm going to present this in whatever way it comes, because I know my subject so well. I'm going to bring out the key points from whatever comes up and you will end up with everything you need, but maybe not in the order I originally planned. That guy got about a two minute standing ovation at the end. And so what that taught me was to stay calm, to stay present, to connect with the audience, but also to know your topic. So that must be very important too. Knowing your topic is of course very important, but what I've learned coaching these people all over the world is, I'm so fortunate to have this gig. Most of the people I work with have more than enough information. It's yeah. disseminating that information, eliminating what's unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. And editing becomes even more valuable than knowing the subject. People, people nowadays don't get to the position that, that you and I work with them uh, by accident. Mm. They, they know their onions. They have tons to share and tons of experience. And you know, for the beginner or someone who's beginning a startup or, or, or has an idea and they're looking for funding and they're, uh, they're out looking for funding, the, the ability to speak well and communicate about what one does know becomes very, very critical. So that takes time in deciding what are the bullet points for this? Because I know so much. How, how do I edit it? Mm. How do there's, I a great, edit? there's a great saying, isn't there? I think it's Blair Pascal, which is, I'm sorry I wrote you such a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. <laughs> yes, forgive me. I didn't have. Yes. <laughs> It and then, um, you know, that, and that is that self-editing or that editing down. And that obviously is very key. But let's just circle back to the good old limbic amygdala and, um, you know, that kind of primitive, because obviously, the, you know, we're talking about monkey brain, the monkey mind, that reptilian mind, that primitive part of the mind, which, as you said earlier, is the part that when we come out on stage, you know, there's a part of our brain going, Going hostile, hostile, there might be a saber tooth tiger, those people possibly have spears, and we go into that fight, flight, or freeze mode. And that's obviously why most people fear public speaking. Would you agree with that? And how can you immediately help them to overcome that? Well, you are, of course, we're both coming from the same town on that because <laughs> we both know that that's what it is. And the fact of the matter is I've learned over the years that the more information one gains and the more experience one gains, like again, for your, your newer entrepreneurs, the more you're going to be called upon to, to present. Mm. And that fear 
after all these years of going in front of the camera and all these years of going on stage, I have to tell you, it never goes away. Right. What it does is escalates. Mm. Why? Because all of a sudden you're working on an equity stage or all of a sudden you're working with looking across the face from Alan Arkin and all of a sudden the stakes are being raised. What do I do to calm myself? Now I get to your question. The same way an athlete, if you if people have ever watched the, the Olympics, gets down to run the 50-yard dash or the 100-meter run, you, you'll see them. They'll take big, deep breaths. They'll move their shoulders. They'll cross themselves. They'll, they'll do all of these. But one thing, uncategorical, even basketball players, before they do a free toss, they take in breath. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that I would open a door to go on stage without taking an enormous breath in and out. And that immediately gets me inside my body. And it immediately tells the amygdala, which doesn't have a college degree, <laughs> yes. and stay. Because fear, I've learned over the years, and nerves is really they're really stupid mm. <laughs> they're not as smart as we are we're smarter so yeah. when we take a big deep breath in and out the amygdala oh i'll sit the limbic i'll sit it's that simple we have a great tv series at the moment in the uk i don't know if you have it uh in america called freeze the fear with wim hof and if you're not familiar with Wim Hof, uh, I'm a very big fan. I've been a fan for probably four years when I discovered him at A-Fest. And he's called the Iceman. Now, Wim holds more... Oh, I know who he is! Yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. He, he holds more world records for enduring uh, incredibly cold um, experiences, running barefoot across, you know, snowy landscapes, swimming under ice, etc. Yes. And the TV series, he's taken a bunch of about 10 UK celebrities and he's teaching them the Wim Hof method. And really the freezing the fear is all about your breathing and getting on top of your limbic amygdala. That's exactly really what it's all about. And wow. so I'm, I'm sure you'll find that really fascinating when you catch up with that TV program. Thank you. Thank you. So over and above the body language, obviously body, voice, improvisation, intention, all fantastic things you've covered. What about actual appearance? Is appearance, appearance, one's appearance important? And including that really on virtual presentations, you know, the good old Zoom and, and the days of all of these presentations, what would you have to say about that? Well, the, the when we go into these corporations and teach groups of people, of course, now we've been online, you know, we had to transfer everything and, and edit it down and teach online. The first thing we do is send a pre-work page that they have to do to even get to the workshop, which <laughs> is make sure your camera's eye level, make sure that your face is lit, make sure that you're dressing for humans eyeballs you know that there are other people watching you and and the I I think I asked you uh, I, are we going to be on camera or is you this did video? you did yes and I and, said get your lipstick out get your lipstick <laughs> out the woman said to me she gets it and they we have to dress out of respect for others don't you see whether we're on camera or whether we're in person to dress for myself, it's a t-shirt and these comfortable sweats that I have. To dress for you, I, I dress out of respect and that's what it is. There's a second thing too I wanna add. This village of this Zoom work, these meetings that we have, have a benefit. Mm. The benefit is the camera. And actors have learned how to go, if you want to make a living, seamlessly from stage to camera, from camera back to stage again. There are techniques to doing that. It's not major brain surgery, but it does take some knowledge and some training 
to know how to use the camera. And so the benefits of dressing well and looking well and women putting on a little something uh, enhanced the benefit of this camera. The, the, that's most, that's the, the most simple technique I can leave your, your listeners with, if you want a quick one, you want a quick? Mm, yes, please. So that they can see the difference. This, this is me looking at myself and I notice that the beautiful sun is starting to come in and there's trees out there. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm sorry. It's reflecting on me, but I'm looking at myself, which I have to admit I enjoy. I, if I can't pass a shop window without looking at myself. Now I'm looking at you mm. and you're absolutely beautiful. And this, I love your background and I'm looking at you and you can certainly see the difference. Now I'm looking at another monitor that someone may have because they work in data or they look at work in medicine, a medical field, and they're talking and looking at their monitor. But now I'm looking at you. And that's the greatest. Yes. I'm looking at you. Yes. So we need to know when to check the audience real quick and when to come back home. And so we do that training. Cameras a benefit. I'm reading an autobiography of uh, Miriam Margolis at the moment. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She was an English, quite a character actress. She was in Harry Potter. She's been in many, many movies. Uh, she's also absolutely hilarious and she dishes all the dirt. So you might really enjoy her book. I got um, her name down. Yeah, Miriam Margolis. But uh, she's just shared, and I, I'm... I can't remember the actor, but it's, you know, somebody incredibly famous that he said to her, you're acting on the movie like you're acting on the stage and you need to be a lot more still and let the camera find you in the movie and stop moving about so much like you would being over expressive on stage. And she said she had to learn to really rein it in when she was on the camera. Um, and it was really great advice. The, the, that, that practice is, uh, I will call it a practice. When I was very young, I, I left university to go be an actor. I called an agent and I said, I'm Billy so-and-so and, and I'm an actress. And he said, well, come on. She said, well, come on in. And I came on in and she sent me on an audition and I got the job and I thought, oh, what is <laughs> this is great. And then I was doing a play after I was shooting a commercial one day and had to go to the theater. And I went to the theater and afterwards they give notes, the director gives notes and you write down your notes. And the director kept saying to me, Billy project, scene one, when you come into the kitchen, you've got to project, all right? Yeah, Billy, when, when you go out to the garden, remember we need to hear you, you've got to project, you've got to talk more loudly and everything. And what I realized was all during the day I'd been shooting that spot, that commercial. Yeah. And it might, and the sound people took care of everything. And in the evening, it's a 638 house. You, you got to project, so back and forth. The other thing I want to add to that is on stage, we're pushing the molecules out to the back house, you know, mm -hmm. out to the back. That, that takes more force. The camera, we think it. Yes. So that was such a good note he got she got from him yes no she said it changed her whole career and it was oh, really fantastic. Yeah. um and it will come back to me who it was but uh yeah she was very grateful to him yeah that's a good story yeah no it's a great it's a really great <laughs> autobiography she's uh uh she's a darling of uh, graham norton who's an english chat show host um and <laughs> i think he i think she's his favorite and if you can actually find online Graham Norton interviewing her on his show you will thank me <laughs> you will thank me for it because she's oh, that's funny yes so how how in your words does an acting teacher hold the key to greater influence and your happy customers and also better relationships because I know you you speak about all of that in your notes oh thank you for asking it's it's all the same whether we're speaking one-on-one -on -one or one on a hundred thousand. 
It is knowing our intention, and here's a key, and having that intention connected to a strong feeling mm. within it, that that intention means something to me. That takes time. That takes time talking to a teenage child. Yes. Telling them that they're not going to the slumber party as much as they want to go because their boyfriend's going to be there. If I'm not clear on my intention, which is no, you're not going, they'll con you. They'll figure it out. Yeah. They'll get to that party, man. They, mm -hmm. they can out talk you. If mm -hmm. my intention isn't clear that I need uh, more child support from, from an ex-husband, mm. he'll talk you out of it. He'll, he'll finagle you out of it sometime. Make it, but if my intention is clear, one of two things is going to happen. I will either get that extra child support or I will quit asking him because mm. I will get his genuine answer instead of the tap dancing. So what occurs with, with this process of being in the present moment and finding our truthful intention and connecting it to a strong feeling is we get in our power instead of just up here. We get in our power, which is body, voice, molecules, energy, and everything behind us, all that I call it a creative flow. It, everyone's been in the zone. You want to be in that zone and we can get in that zone whenever we need to. It's teachable. It's trainable. I'm almost done talking. And what occurs with everyone from doctors to CEOs to shopkeepers to actors is once they experience this genuine, truthful, moment of communicating from their presence, from their present moment, they won't stand for less. No. Yes, it's like the magic, isn't it? Once you've felt it, once you've been in that flow, you 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 know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine there must be some quite incredible shifts that happen at some of your in-workshop experiences because you're bringing all of this fairy dust, uh, getting people to really connect to their core, to their intention, to their values, to create that connection. Could you maybe share a couple of some of those memorable moments with our listeners? Oh, that's so dear. Of course, you're absolutely correct. That's why I love what I do. The, the other piece of this is that the other people in the workshop observe those truthful moments and they want what that person got. They, I, I want to do how that person got there and then they start doing it and get it. So we become more discerning audience members too. I've had so many changes in front of my face that, the first one is an incredibly, I deal a lot with engineers, software engineers, hardware engineers and software engineers. And they're not exactly all comedians who wanna go out on stage. They're more behind, <laughs> the, behind the scenes. And there was a, a young gentleman who was so nervous, he couldn't even get a sentence out at the beginning of the workshop. And you've heard this story before, and we kept working with him and he was trying very hard and he just couldn't do it. And he kept saying, everybody has told me my whole life that I either can't get a sentence out or when I do, I speak too fast for them to understand. So it was like fast gear, slow gear. He was, he was so challenged. We worked with him, we worked with him and I worked with him and I whispered something in his ear about being clear on your intention but attach it to a feeling. Don't tell me what the feeling is, but you attach it to a feeling that you know, before. and don't go into the playing area until you know that intention in this scene and, and attach it to a strong feeling of yours. It doesn't even have to make sense. You just have to feel it. And their, their improvisation, which they get to make up was Star Trek. They were on a, a thing, what do you call it? Spaceship. Yeah. 
And he was the commander and the engineer in the back told them that an asteroid was coming toward them, <laughs> right? So they had to do all this. Well, he turned into the Dalai Lama managing this space vehicle, getting them out of the asteroid's way. And, and I was crying and the audience was crying and the engineer behind, he had his mouth open the whole time because this was the Dalai Lama behaving sort of engineer, getting them safe, all right? And when he came out of it, he wasn't exactly sure what had occurred. He, he was so in it as his calm, wise, brilliant self. And do you know, to this day, they're calling him Dolly. He's the Dalai Lama. It was a metamorphosis mm. because he suddenly became clear about what he was talking for. Why am I talking? It's not just to give data. Mm. It's not just to give information. It's to help this ship stay safe, whatever. And then whatever connection he made it to. That was just one of them. Oh. That's beautiful. That, that is so, yeah, that's really beautiful. I feel like I was there. I feel like I was watching. <laughs> oh. So I have two final questions for you. One is, what is the question that I haven't asked you that you would like to ask yourself? Oh, I would like to know. I have two. How did I, how did I get this spunk? <laughs> how, how did I get the courage to keep changing mm. and adapting through my life? That, that if, if, if I could figure out if that was, I don't know if it makes any difference a quality that I had, or just that I observed and continued to practice it. And the other part of that is even more ways to work through fear, because mm -hmm. I've gotten so strong and so much less fearful of asking for things or, or trying new things. But to help others, I would like to know other ways of helping others get rid of fear because fear is really stupid. And where, where do you think you get your spunk from then? I think I, I think I got it by genetically, I, my parents and behaving like my father in business and I don't know. I don't know. It's a curious thing. I've always been a leader. Even when I was this big, I would go, come on, guys. And I'd lead them and people would follow me. And I'd always lead them to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the symphony's that way. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know where I got this confidence, this spunk, but I'm, I'm glad I've got it. I don't know. That was a roundabout way. No, I love it. I love it. And, you know, I... Sometimes we don't entirely know, but I think it's lovely that you recognize it. And I think that's the key thing. Um, so the final question would be, what would be the question that you're really glad I haven't asked you? Um, that's it. Oh, you dog, you. <laughs> uh, how do you price your business? Oh, yeah. Well, that's always. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Because it, it's very difficult, isn't it, to to quantify something as incredible as that you're offering, because not only is it, you know, like myself, it's an actual service that you can create a website about and say, this is what we do. And these are the elements. But it's those incredible changes that you give to people. They're the they're the you know, how do you quantify what that does in your life? And, and yeah, that I think that's the difficult part, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's a challenge sometimes. Yeah. And so in terms of your monkey mind, you know, like that chatter that you get in your mind, what's your go to technique to to kind of harness it to keep it tame? You know, I I'm a member for years, for 45 years of a fellowship, uh, a 12 step fellowship, and I have a big support group there. And I do do my quiet time in the morning and I do keep positive meditation books with the daily reading sort of thing mm. next to me. I'm a sucker for that because I find it helps. Mm. I, I uh, only keep people that support me around me. Well, I, I think that's very, very important. I'm a great one for getting rid of the frenemies. Getting rid of the frenemies. I love that. I may use that. I'll tell you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we know now, don't we? Very quickly. We do. And my, my other one that I just recently did a webinar on, and uh, I'm happy to send you the recording, Please. is putting the itty bitty shitty committee in your head on mute. Oh, please do share that with me. Yes. That's those, those voices that come from others, but then we internalize them and you realize that you're the one repeating them and carrying them around in your head. And oh. when you learn to shut that up and create a compassion voice within your head, create your boundaries to stop the frenemies. I think that is absolutely key. And like you, uh, I live by that. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Well, please do share. That's I'm more than happy to. Well, Billy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. My guest today on Monkey Business has been Billy Shepherd, who has given us so many incredible practical and applicable tools to really help you from everything from public speaking to how you turn up on Zoom, but also really to get to that core connection about how you connect with your own intention your own inner voice and also be able to connect with others through that authenticity and I absolutely love that thank you Billy for joining me thank you for having me you were a delight to be with no oh, well uh the feeling's mutual so love the rest of your day and thank you very much you've been listening to monkey business I'm Rosalind Palmer and you're most welcome <laughs>